This video explains how to change the T-naught period of the output pulse and the relationship between width, delay, and the output period in the Quantum Composer's 9520 series pulse generator. We will be using a 9522 for the video, but all of the information contained in this video applies to any member of the 9520 series. For our example, the output on channel A is set to 10 microseconds with a delay of 0 seconds. The period can be viewed by pressing the function button followed by the number 4 button. In this case it's set to 100 microseconds. The period corresponds to the amount of time between two rising edges of the output. With these settings we see a 10% duty cycle pulse output as represented in this scope trace. Changing the width of the output pulse will change the duty cycle. In this case we'll change the width to 50 microseconds making the output a 50% duty cycle. Given these settings, the output will behave as one would expect by generating a 50 microsecond wide pulse every 100 microseconds. An important rule of thumb to remember is that the period of the output pulse must be greater than the total of the pulse width and delay by approximately 75 nanoseconds. Let's set the period to 40 microseconds and see what the output does. As the period is decreased, the amount of time the output is at zero volts decreases until we reach a period that is equal to the width of 50 microseconds. At this point, the output changes to a signal that appears to have a period of 100 microseconds. As we decrease the period down to 40 microseconds, the output appears to have a period of 80 microseconds. Once we've violated the period rule of thumb, the output period will be twice the set period. Remember, the period must be greater than the width plus the delay plus 75 nanoseconds. For additional videos and information on all of our products, please visit our website at www.quantumcomposers.com.